Hello everybody, my name is, uh, it's Cheesemo here, back with another MVP chapter. Today we're going to talk about the legendary Royal Diamond. Um, before I start, I want to let you know there's three phases to his MVP career. There's his origin story, there's the coup that devastated MVP, and then there's his retribution arc. So, I hope you enjoy, and here we go. Royal Diamond, who used to be known as the third lieutenant of MVP's fourth genera generation, decided to turn his back on MVP for the last time. Before you find out what occurred, let Cheesemo explain his downfall, because at first, he was a kid trying to become a strong Call of Duty player. Also, he was trying to become the strongest captain in MVP history, but his ideals of the position were obstinate. Royal Diamond assumed that the captain rank meant that an MVP member was superior than everyone in the family. Furthermore, each time he won a 1v1 against someone in MVP made him very cocky, to the point where talking trash to his ah sorry talking trash in his mind was acceptable. Therefore, in the fourth generation back in the year 2015, Diamond got promoted by the second captain, Black Machismo, for displaying leadership qualities like loyalty, determination, and completing all Chismo training. The founder of MVP didn't realize that promoting Royal Diamond was a bad decision at the time because Chismo needed eight candidates for the third captain tournament. Also, Chismo didn't realize that once Diamond was given a little authority would cause him to start swearing at everyone in MVP's fourth generation. At first, Chismo thought Diamond was just trying to get in his opponent's head but sadly, that wasn't the cause. He actually meant every word. Furthermore, instead of motivating members to improve their skills every day, Diamond consistently put all members down by saying, You guys are the shittiest players I have ever seen. The second captain told Diamond countless of times to always try to motivate members and give positive advice. Because the more you trash talk them, can make them follow in your negative footsteps. He must have had tons of wax in his ears because Diamond didn't listen or understood what being captain is or the importance behind the position. In 2015 of the fourth generation around January 1st, Chismo told Royal Diamond about how first generation was formed and has currently been the strongest generation in MVP for four years. Diamond was intrigued about the first gen, but what impressed him the most was how two members from first gen became captains such as Edward and Troy. Royal Diamond wanted to know who was better, the first cap Edward or the second cap Troy. Chismo stated, well besides being taught how to play COD by Edward, completing special ops training, 1v1ing him every day for two years straight, or by making a tournament in our neighborhood to determine the best two COD players, going house to house beating everyone in Modern Warfare 2, I'll have to say we are evenly matched for five years, until the second cap tournament where I finally surpassed my mentor. Once Diamond heard the tale of the previous two captains' origins, he started to look up to his captain, Black Machismo, more, because Cheese was a great COD player and currently the strongest player in MVP. During the ongoing months, Diamond trained every day improving in 1v1s to further his desire on becoming captain himself. He didn't want anyone to stand in his way like Royal to Loyal who brought him in MVP or Suicidal who he brought in MVP, especially WWFS, the original lieutenant of first generation. At first, Diamond expected that WWE would win because of his years of experience in MVP, but Throughout the weeks, it was clear his only threat was the first lieutenant of MVP's 4th gen, Royal to Loyal. Furthermore, the thought of someone being evenly matched with Diamond was eating him up inside, because since Royal to Loyal was the first lieutenant, meant he had a 95% chance of winning the third captain tournament. Royal Diamond asked Chismo why he has a 95% chance of winning. The second cap stated it's because whoever becomes first lieutenant is destined to be captain. Edward was first lieutenant potential in 2010 and became captain in 2011. Also, I became first lieutenant in 2012 by finally understanding what it meant to be a true leader and become captain in 2013. Now, all of the lieutenants I promoted 
would make a great successor to me, but I'm looking forward to see either you or Royal to Loyal in the finals. Therefore, Royal Diamond said, I will become third captain because the rest of the competition aren't in my league, cheese. Plus, how defend my honor and young prince made co-leader? They suck in 1v1s, but whatever. In April 1st, the second captain told Royal Diamond that the fourth generation recently became the strongest generation in MVP history because after four years, the first gen record of 75 to 9 has been broken. Royal Diamond started to feel happy that his generation accomplished a task neither the second or third generation couldn't. So Diamond asked, how much we won by? Black Machismo said, I was in a party with Royal Tolo, Young Prince, Super Pig, Super Hype, and WWE on Hijack. We beat a team 75 to 9 the first match, tying the record. But during the second match, we beat our enemy 75 to 5, making MVP history. After Diamond realized his generation was the strongest in MVP history, only fueled his cockiness through the glass ceiling. Sadly, Chismo didn't realize this till after the third captain tournament. In mid-August, Royal Diamond founded a protege named Suicidal Leaguer, whose personality and playing capabilities were similar to his, which made them rivals. Diamond introduced Suicidal to the second captain on the map Carrier in Black Ops 2. During the match, Chismo was analyzing Suicidal's teamwork capabilities and personality. Once the match finished, Chismo welcomed Suicidal and MVP, then got offline. But Chismo realized that Diamond could must, most likely influence Suicidal to his bad habits. Furthermore, Chismo came to a conclusion that ever, even if Suicidal found, followed in Diamond's footsteps, they both will realize what it means to make a true captain in MVP's future, like I did. Sadly, the second captain didn't open his eyes wide enough to understand that everyone's different in MVP. WWE, along with the previous three generations, didn't want Chismo to have a successor because he was doing a great job as second cap. Black Chismo started to get worried about the third captain tournament, but the second captain needed a strong successor since he was graduating high school and going to college. Therefore, if Royal to Loyal's protege Royal Diamond won the third cap tournament of the third cap tournament MVP's future would have been chaos filled with members and lieutenants leaving. Also the legacy of captains wouldn't mean anything anymore, especially MVP spirit. Plus all those future members would have became cockier than Diamond, which would get them demoted or kicked out of MVP, which would make MVP a clan, not a family anymore. If Royal Diamond became third cap, no one in, in the fifth generation would have gotten training. But if they did, it wouldn't make individual members great players. They'll probably end up like Diamond, which could, ha could have became a bigger coup if MVP made it to the sixth generation. The day Royal Diamond got promoted, Chismo said, Royal Diamond, you were brought in MVP by First Lieutenant Royal Tolo. Since your debut, you've always... You always, you've been always trying to improve in MVP with both Chismo training any, and your individual training on all the maps in the game. Also, you're one of the most focused and hardworking MVP members I have ever seen, to the point where you brought Suicidal into the family. Furthermore, after completing Chismo training, you've become an outstanding player that rivals me at the top of game lobbies now, so I'm promoting you to the third lieutenant of MVP's fourth generation. Royal Diamond stated, thanks Chismo, like, I love MVP and I appreciate what you've done for me. Chismo stated that that's my duty as captain, but remember, you're now the future of MVP, so don't get cocky and let down your guard in the third cap tournament. On the other hand, Chismo had high expectations for Royal to Loyal to become third captain of MVP, because he was respected in the fourth generation. The day Royal Diamond, uh, the day Royal to Loyal got promoted, promoted, Chismo said, "Listen, Royal to Loyal, the reason why I told you to hop on BO2 was because I want to promote you to the first lieutenant of MVP's fourth generation. Also, I wanted to say the road ahead isn't easy, but becoming a lieutenant means you're the future of MVP. Furthermore, you're 
you being promoted, you're being promoted because you're an outstanding leader that could one day succeed me. You've completed cheesemo training and you can now drop dangerous streaks while I'm in the same lobby. Rotolo was crying and told Cheesemo thanks, Cheese, for your advice and support, making me a better COD player. Try to check out Rotolo's channel. It's called King Nami. K I N G N A M Triple I. Back to this tale. The second cap said, that's my duty as captain, but by being the first lieutenant means that you have a 95% possibility of winning the third captain tournament. The reason why is because Edward was first lieutenant, then became first cap, also I was first lieutenant of first gen, and now I'm second captain of MVP. Therefore, since you're first lieutenant now of the fourth generation, I'm counting on you to continue the legacy of the previous two caps. Royal to Loyal stated, thanks Chismo. I won't let the you the both of you down and I'll give the tournament a hundred percent. Fucking paper. Okay, so on January first, twenty sixteen, Chismo spoke his last words to all the lieutenants before the tournament started. Everyone, listen, before you came in MVP you were all you were alone by yourself, struggling to win matches due to your team's ability understand that some of you might have been in another clan with someone ordering you around threatening to kick you out for either getting all the kills not listening to orders being muted because they're tired of hearing you talk and most of all getting kicked out then you left and you tried to whoop ass by yourself until you noticed this clan mvp you face this clan and get beat and wonder how but the answer was already there they were a team but yours were random, so you made a decision to join MVP. Therefore, once joining the clan, you met Cheesemo, the founder of MVP and MVP's second captain, learning it's a family, not a clan. After knowing so, you became interested and really thought of this clan as a family. So by doing this, you all worked hard, getting kills, protecting your fellow MVP members, and ensuring MVP wins all the time. Before you all, before you were all lieutenants, your goal and desires was to have fun, work hard on improving your skills and abilities online. Also furthering your strategies by doing combat training after a defeat. Before you all used to be regular MVP members, learning the ways of MVP, trying to pass me on the leaderboard. By doing this you all improved to the highest expectations and requirements to earn every right to become the next ranking MVP, which is a fellow leader, respected member, a determined COD player, and MVP's elite class. Therefore, after earning that reward, you all became top three of the game lobbies, even number one above me, allowing you to be leader and the future of MVP because that's what a lieutenant is, the future, because it's one rank lower than captain, which is the best of the best class. All I can say is I love all of you with everything in my heart, and as seen, I'll do whatever it takes to bring MVP to the win. Times are ticking. The game will start. Remember, don't be mad of your defeat. Instead, learn from it. Because this is the biggest test in your MVP time and legacy. The person you're up against is your equal in every right, which is your opponent and yourself. Because whoever wins this has proven that he has the ability strength, determination, leadership, and heart to lead MVP to the next 5th and 6th generation. Now understand, I was told by the entire clan of the 1st and 2nd generation to be the next leader of MVP. I turned it down because I didn't feel ready until I beat my best friend, greatest rival, mentor, and fellow captain that taught me everything about COD. Once I surpassed Edward, as you know, I became the second captain of MVP and I really felt like I earned it. Also with that motivation I inspired myself to find and build the fourth generation making it the best and last generation of the previous three. I trained the winner of the third captain, oh sorry, my bad guys, my bad, I fucked up, I didn't see the period. I trained. Whoa. The last generation of the previous three. Whatever. I trained three generations. That's basically what I was saying. 
The winner of the third captain tournament was Rotolo. He overcame all odds and thought of the future and gave it his all. Rotolo used the SMR with stock, reflect sight, and select fire. He first faced Royal Diamond, and during the match, all lieutenants, including Chizmo, didn't know who was going to win. While the match was going full blast, Loyal had the lead over his student, whom he recruited an MVP after his lead. He didn't stop rushing Diamond the whole match. He played like all the previous generations Cheese will train, which made his strategy unpredictable. He beat Diamond 30-15, to 15, and Royal Diamond raged and signed out. Then Diamond came back to witness the winner of the semifinals, which was Royal to Loyal, when Loyal versus Suicidal, the most determined MV- member in MVP. Suicidal used three different guns the whole game, which was his Scar H with Stock and Suppressor, the MAA1, and the FAL. Sadly, it wasn't enough because before the tournament, Rotolo trained till he figured out all the spawns on Nuketown 2025. It was a close game, but Rotolo beat Suicidal 30 to 26. Afterwards, Suicidal stayed but was disappointed. Then the finals came. It was Rotolo versus Defend My Honor. The match began. And it was a fairly close game, but Rotolo got the lead and beat Defend 30-21. to During the match, Defend was using a Scar H, the AK-47, and the SMR, but still wasn't enough to beat Rotolo. After Rotolo became the third captain of MVP, Diamond decided to leave MVP and claimed Rotolo was camping. The funny thing was, they both weren't camping. It's just Diamond wasn't prepared for his SMR and Road to Loyal had a more desire to win than anyone else. Also, he didn't cheat because I said you can use any gun in the 1v1s. After that issue, Royal Diamond wanted a rematch, but he couldn't have the title of captain if he won because it's already done. Royal Diamond continued crying and demanded a rematch. Chismo said, if you battle Royal to Loyal while angry... He will end up beating you worse. All you want is revenge. Sadly, Diamond didn't want to listen. And Chismo could tell he wanted to prove to himself, A, he could beat Royal to Loyal. He only lost because Royal to Loyal spawn trapped and most of all proved that he should be third captain. Therefore, Royal to Loyal accepted and round two began. Sadly, Diamond didn't play smart because he was so angry and started camping with a riot shield, claymores, a trophy system that destroys any thrown grenades or C4s. Sadly, it wasn't enough. Diamond tried using a shotgun, but still wasn't enough. Royal Toloyo just kept killing him, but this time running around the map instead of playing slow. Therefore, the third captain, Royal Toloyo, beat Royal Diamond again. But this time, 30-3, which destroyed his student's pride and changed Diamond's personality forever. Okay, one second. There we go. After the match, Diamond was quiet, in tears, realizing that Roy Toloyo didn't cut corners in the tournament. So Chismo told both of them to talk and laugh. Rotolo said, Diamond, I believe Chismo put us up against each other because he knew me and you were equally matched. The reason I won is because while you were playing BO3, I was here training and preparing to face you. Diamond was crying. Rotolo continued to say, I didn't want to win like this. And I learned a lot playing online with you, figuring out how you play and was ready. Therefore, Royal Toloyo calmed Royal Diamond down and made Diamond change his mind on leaving and came back. Royal Diamond said, All I wanted was to become captain. The third cap Royal Toloyo started stated, Well, there's always next time, and I'll prepare you for the fourth captain tournament in two years from now. After we all partied up, played online together, winning several matches without losing, then after our victory on Carrier, everyone signed offline. In the year 2016 was the fifth generation era. Royal Diamond, whose real name is Jalen, became one of the most focused, 
hardworking MVP Lieutenant Cheeseman ever saw. In Royal Diamond's mind, being successful in Call of Duty, you have to be determined to be great, and great is power. Before Diamond was in MVP, he played as a solo player, which means he only looked out for himself. Furthermore, Royal Diamond was in another clan before MVP, but didn't have but they didn't have the same motivation he expected, so he decided to leave because they went to a new console and Diamond didn't think they were serious. A couple weeks in January, the third captain thought Royal Diamond taught Royal Diamond his strategy in 1v1s, combined with Diamonds made Jalen unpredictable in 1v1s. Royal Diamond used a MSNC with quick draw and long barrel and his secondary was a DSR sniper rifle with dual band. The reason Diamond's class setup is like that is because it makes him unstoppable close range and long range. In March 12, 2016, Royal Diamond was unbeatable in 1v1s for three months during the fifth generation development but hit a roadblock with a man who brought him an MVP, the man who took his spot out of the third captain tournament, which is Royal Toloil. Today, Royal Diamond wanted to prove that he was better than the third cap by challenging him to a 1v1 in any guns on Nuketown 2025. The first match, Loyal won, but the second round started. Royal Toloil had to do stuff in his house and told Diamond not to kill him, but he did. Later that day, Royal Toloil told Black Machismo, Doc. Every time I see Diamond, I see Red Fam. Diamond took the, t the teachings I gave him in 1v1s to showcase his dominance in MVP. Second Cat said, I understand where you're coming from. I'll talk to Diamond about his behavior lately. And remember, he's still family. Therefore, Cheeseman told Diamond, if you continue to act like a stubborn asshole towards these 5th gen and fourth gen members, they'll end up following in your bad footsteps. Please try to act like a future leader again, because there's 36 members currently in fifth gen. Try to understand how MVP lieutenants act and play. So if you keep saying they're weak and not a challenge, they will do the same in their lieutenant run, which will become chaos future generations from now. <laughs> Oh, right. I like how sarcastic I can be talking to Diamond back in the day. Diamond only agreed uh, so Chismo's, to Chismo's argument so that the conversation could be over. Sadly, no matter what Chismo Rotolo said was going to change his ego. In, Mar in late March 23rd, 2016, Breezy, the ninth lieutenant of MVP's 4th Gen, send a few domination pictures of himself to the first MVP chat on Facebook, which caught the attention of the third lieutenant of MVP's fourth gen, Royal Diamond. Royal Diamond stated, Breezy, I've heard by several members and lieutenants that you're undefeated in 1v1s. Well, I'm not impressed because I'm undefeated too in 1v1s. Also, you know that map hijack where you dropped 120 kills against weak competition? I've done the same, achieving 87 kills and one death. Breezy said, good job, Diamond. Then Diamond stated, yeah, just wanted to let you know who's the best around here. Then Chismo realized this epic confrontation between these two great lieutenants. So Chismo suggested a 1v1 between, two, ah, between the two and this argument once and for all. Therefore, Royal Diamond invited Breezy to a 1v1 custom game, so Superman Breezy versus Batman Diamond began. In the, in the beginning of the match, Diamond killed Breezy a few times. Plus, there was no time limit, so Diamond played very patiently. Once Breezy realized Diamond's spawn trapping strategy, he brought out his MAA1 with select fire. Then Breezy took control of Orange House, killing Diamond upstairs. After he killed Diamond, he pushed Red Car head glitch, hoping for an easy kill. But Diamond threw a smoke and shot Breezy from the middle of the map. Then Breezy started thinking of a strategy to throw Diamond off his technique, so he stayed mostly in the middle using his hearing to his advantage. So each time Diamond moved anywhere on the map, Breezy ended up killing Diamond several times, which made Diamond try using his hearing as well. During the middle of the match, both these two were killing each other back and forth, as if it were the fourth cap tournament finals. 
Also, it was impossible to drop streaks on each other because they weren't letting their guard down at all. Plus, Diamond managed to get the lead by three kills. Furthermore, Diamond started trash talking saying, I told you not to challenge me. Now you're going to find out the hard way what happens when you face me in a 1v1. Therefore, the score was 29 Diamond and 28 Breezy. So Breezy started shooting Diamond up in the window of Orange House, but he got hit markers. So Diamond threw a concussion and made his way outside. Breezy managed to kill Diamond right side Orange House, then pushed head glitched at red car near Orange Garage. On the other hand, Diamond pushed that green car in the middle of the map, head glitch. So it all came down to who's got the fastest accuracy. Therefore, Breezy managed to jump in the air, killing Diamond, winning the 30-minute match. Then Breezy took a picture and sent it to that first MVP chat. Then Breezy said, Yo, Diamond, I'm doing a training session tomorrow. If you have the time, reach on Nuketown 2025 so I could teach you how to play Call of Duty Black Ops 2 properly. After Diamond's defeat, he realized his undefeated streak was over. Everyone was right about Breezy possibly becoming the fourth captain. And despite everyone copying Diamond's 1v1 strategy, Diamond started to feel frustrated about not being the strongest lieutenant of fourth generation anymore. So for a couple of weeks, he was worried about Breezy in the fourth captain tournament. On April 1st, 2016, Black Machines declared a new event in MVP called Gen vs. Gen, where past, present, and future gens could clash together to declare uh, the strongest generation MVP history. The main reason Cheese Mode came up with this event was due to the fifth gen having 70 members, which is the most in MVP history. The second captain's team had Breezy, Suicidal, Royal Diamond, Young Prince, Defend My Honor, Trevor, and Pan. Road to Lowe's team had Fragile Blades, Conviction, Beast Nips, Ibrahim, Commando, Baby Ashi, ID, and Rambo the Great. The first match was TD Team Deathmatch on Yemen, 200 kills, which 4th Gen won. Then the second match was Sniping on Raid, but since Cheese had the first cap of MVS, he felt confident in his team. So the 5th Gen had to step up their game big time, but sadly, they were defeated again. But once it was sniping on standoff, they were victorious. Furthermore, since it was tied 1-1 in the series, both caps could join in with their gens on drone. But since Royal Tolo couldn't snipe and Chizmo could, gave his team an advantage, which 4th gen won in sniping. Therefore, the final map was hijacked where Breezy used his LSAT with FMJ grip and stopped killing the 5th gen like no tomorrow. Breezy managed to drop Swarm, Hailstorm Missile, and UAVs, which allowed him to lead his generation to victory with assistance from Suicidal. After the Gen vs. Gen, Royal Diamond regained his cocky ego and dominance amongst the 5th generation. Also, he started to despise all the generations in MVP except 4th Gen. Okay, hold on. 28 minutes. 26 seconds uh, minutes seconds okay all right so on august 10th 2016 the first captain returned i wanted to play gta with chismo so the second cat messaged diamond saying you want to meet edward also before i introduce you don't try to say anything gay. Don't start swearing at any of the third gen lieutenants in the party either. Lastly, just be normal and mature, Diamond, because they will kick you out the party or mute you. Do you understand? Royal Diamond said, okay. But the second cap was so worried that Diamond was going to embarrass him and let his ego control him. Once Diamond joined the party, he didn't introduce himself normally. He started talking about random bullshit that didn't make any sense. At first, Diamond said, So you're Edward, huh? The first cat was in a race and said, Who's saying my name? Jalen started, stated, Me, Royal Diamond. I'm the third lieutenant of MVP's fourth gen. The first cat said, Okay, but how do you know my name? Like, that's weird. Jalen said, Eddie, everyone knows you. 
you uh, everyone knows who you are because of me talking about our greatest matches together. The first lieutenant of MVP's third generation hockey Gagney said, "Why is your uh, wait? Why you name yourself Royal Diamond?" And then started laughing because of Diamond's voice. During the race we were having, Diamond started to spin out everyone consistently. Edward said, Yo, kid, can you, like, stop? Diamond started laughing, then said, I want to suck your dick, daddy. At that point, everyone in the party started telling Diamond that he's fucking gay. Now, in Diamond's mind, he thinks they get he's joking, but both Edward and the third gen weren't. The second cat told Diamond, what the fuck are you doing, Jalen? Now you've completely pissed everyone off, including me, with your stupidity. Royal Diamond said, shut up, cheese one. Stop riding Edward's dick. Like, wow. And he started laughing. Hockey Gagney said, you're not even old enough to play this game, kid. Royal Diamond said, I know you want to fuck me, daddy. (laughs) Like, I want you to come on me. Ah, here we go. Therefore, everyone muted Diamond, and Edward said, I don't like that kid, Troy. Why is he an MVP? Then Suicidal joined the party, and chaos started to occur. Hockey Gang, he said, who's this now? F- fuck, I'm going to close the party and kick out this Diamond kid. The second cat said, he's Suicidal, the 8th lieutenant of 4th gen. He was brought in MVP by Royal Diamond. Then Suicidal said, I'm better than everyone in this whole party. After he said that, Hockey Gang, he kicked him out of the party as well. After that, Royal Diamond hated the first cap and all the other generations more. Cheese will assume that if you're not with Diamond, you're against him. And couldn't believe how much he fucked up everyone's day. Later that even Diamond told his version of the story to defend my honor. So Defend joined the first Caps party and said, Cheesemo, you are a fucking bitch. Everyone in MVP sucks and I'm leaving your clan. Therefore, everyone got offline after telling Cheesemo how childish, suicidal, Defend and Diamond were. Hockey Gagney told Cheesemo, if they're in a party with you, I won't join. Especially Black Ops 3. But good night, Cheese. Once the party was closed, Cheese was 100% pissed off, so he invited the fan Diamond and Suicide to a party explaining, in anger, how stupid they are. The second captain said, Defend, I don't know what the fuck Diamond told you about, but don't ever join my fucking party saying everyone in MVP sucks again. It's like, every since you met Diamond, you changed and became a goddamn follower. Then out of the blue... You call me a bitch for no reason, which, by the way, is disrespectful. Furthermore, how dare you say MVP is trash? That's basically saying everyone, including me, sucks. But don't forget who trained you to a good COD player, me. Plus, you've been an MVP for six years and never beaten me once in any guns. So shut the fuck up. Now, Diamond, you think it's all about you, right? Yeah, I hear you all the time saying I'm the best player in MVP, but you're not. You lost the privilege of saying that when you lost in the third captain tournament. In the very first round to Road to Lil. And the previous two caps have the right to say that because we don't. I'm sorry, guys. The previous two caps have the right to say that, but we don't. Because being cap doesn't mean you're better than everyone. It's a position you earn to bring MVP to heights unimaginable. Royal Diamond said, yeah, you have no life while crying. Chismo said, you have no fucking life. I've graduated middle school, high school. I'm in college studying police foundations. So you have no life. Furthermore, you know what? You probably think I'm bullshitting when I say you're an asshole, right? I want you to tell or ask everyone in the chat if you're an asshole. And I guarantee they'll all say yes. So Diamond went to do that and realized Cheeseman was right. Then Cheeseman said, acting like a dumbass around me, I can handle. But you have to realize everyone takes things differently. Now, Suicidal, you fucked up as well. Why you join a party and claim you're better than everyone else after I told you to be mature? You kids don't think and at all at all before you speak. 
So now the third gen doesn't want to talk to you guys ever, including Edward. Therefore, I'm getting offline because you guys fucked up my day. I haven't been this fucking cheesed in a long time. The next day, Defend asked, uh, asked to rejoin MVP again. Chizlo said, if you ever leave again, you will never be able to come back. Do you understand? And Defend said, yes. Seven months later, Royal Diamond didn't let his ego overcome him. So Chizmo assumed that finally he understands how a future fourth captain should act. The second captain, after seven months, realized that Royal Diamond has the same personalities of the previous three captains. He has the first cast personality of knowing he's the best. He has the second cast personality of knowing of being cocky and knowing he's the best of the best. Furthermore, Diamond has the third captain's personality of wanting to destroy his opponents with any means necessary. Cheeseman realized after seven months that Diamond wants to become the strongest captain of the previous three and has been working hard to achieve his desire until the coup. On March 6, 2017, the era of sixth generation, Diamond was having a conversation with WWE, the original lieutenant from the first generation. The conversation was healthy throughout the beginning until Diamond's made fun of WWE, then WWE said, at least, I don't get friend zoned by girls. After Royal Diamond heard that, his his ego that the second cap thought was gone, returned, but sadly worse than ever before. And he let out his rage towards everyone in the second MVP chat. Royal Diamond said, the only reason I play COD was because I want to play with Junior and Jabbar got to be an asshole about it. Since you told about a fucking girl, uh, hold on. Since you told a fucking, told me about a fucking girl, I told you not to try and get for me. He had only that to bring up. So me and Junior are leaving because we're fed up with everything. The Diamond sent Cheese a picture of dropping 43 and 7 with uh, the MVP clan tag on. Cheese just got back home witnessing Diamond's messages. Royal Diamond said, did that five games in a row so that's what you're losing and got an ultra kill in that match i don't know why you're trying to call me out i'm pretty sure i remember saying i'm done with bo2 but you still get on it i'm just trying to have fun with junior and fuck you i can play whatever game i want because you can't stop me i'm so tired of dealing with children i wasn't even being a dick to anyone for like now a year and jabbar thinks he's something he's a bitch nobody <sighs> sorry nobody he's a nobody at least i'm not foreshadowed by anyone like he's your puppet you could ditch him anytime i don't know why you haven't the second captain black which said whether defend leaves is his decision not yours i'm not really sure why you were bragging like you're fucking hercules in the fam but you've left before in the third cap tournament and i gave you one last chance matter of fact i've given everyone one more chance and you have used up all your chances you can't ever come back now friends or not my rule is final as second cap and the founder of mvp let me remind you of mvp slogan real quick mvp is a place where good and bad players can join and improve huh and improve in call of duty and have fun winning or losing games as a family not a fucking clan you said that i'm losing a great player like i messaged you and kicked you out which is impossible because the second slogan is, you can leave or join over your own free will. I'm disappointed in you. Talking like you're the shit and dissing Aleem when he's broken down doors for kids like you. Aleem is the reason lieutenants or that rank exist. Then again, you're not a lieutenant or member anymore, so you don't got to worry about that. Any person, I don't give a fuck who it is, that comes in here bragging about how great he is, talking like a big shot, but cried like a girl losing the third captain tournament is a person who wants attention. And I had so much high hopes for you. And you blew it. Yeah, you've done and accomplished a few things here. But don't you ever fucking say that if it wasn't for you, this family would be nothing. The only people that have the right to say that is the first gen, WWE, me, or Edward. Either then shut the fuck up. Fucking fourth gen Royal Diamond. Like what? That doesn't make any sense, bud. I'm the founder of MP. I made it in 2011. Royal Tolo, the guy who 
you asked to come in here, told me the same exact words to get an MVP. But never once did he ever say, I'm done with this clan or that he's fucking superior than everyone because he's respectful. You need attention. You need to try to prove yourself. You talk down your own comrades and pioneers like D WWE. So you would have made the worst captain in MVP history. I didn't lose anyone. You left on your decision, your choice, not mine. Roa Diamond said, I could care less what you say. Chismo said, I don't care if you join fucking Optic, Flaze, Blaze, Haze, or fucking Doo Doo Clan. You can never come back. Every future cap 10 years from now will have a picture of your face and what you said. Do you understand? Maybe if you cared more of what I said, you wouldn't be crying about chicks every day. This conversation is over. And I'm speaking for everyone in MVP you just disrespected. Now, if you delete me off Facebook or PSN, it's once again your decision. Don't come crying back a week from now. A couple days later, Super Suicidal asked Diamond, asked Diamond to message Chismo to inform him that he's left MVP. Chismo deleted Diamond off PSN, didn't reply back to him. Then Chismo messaged Suicidal saying, why you left MVP? Like, is this true or not? Suicidal kept saying, I don't know. Continuously being a smartass. Furthermore, Cheese would decide to delete Suicide on Defend My Honor off PSN, also Facebook. Then the MVP family finally felt cured of these three lieutenants sucking out the life of MVP. Therefore, Royal Diamond's small coop took a while to develop, but the stuff these three got away with, like talking trash, saying to guys that they have been an MVP longer than them, that they're weak and swearing, wouldn't be accepted in all the clans in the world. Because the second they swear kicked out, the second they make complaints about anything kicked out. Lastly, the second they say the leader or co-leaders are trash, kicked out. In other words, I wish them good luck. And that is the coop. That is done. Fantastic. So now, everybody, we start the retribution. The retribution of Royal Diamond. And forgiveness. So here we go. After a whole year of Royal Diamond's departure from leaving MVP, Chismo continued to build the future of 7th generation in the early year of 2018. Throughout January and February, Chismo was fascinated with Tipsy's development in MVP. Furthermore, Chismo's goal was to make Tipsy the next big star in his generation by teaching him how to snipe properly and master any guns in 1v1s. Tipsy enjoyed his training, but Chismo still felt like something was missing in Tipsy. What Tipsy lacked was a competitive personality of wanting to be the best and intimidating presence when challenged to a 1v1. As days turned into weeks, Chismo only brought out 50% of cockiness from Tipsy. Then Royal Diamond started catching up with Chismo again through social media. Diamond mentioned to Chismo that he kind of retired from Call of Duty to play other games like Rocket League, Fortnite, Minecraft, and Rainbow Six Siege. Chismo was happy that Diamond was able to find happiness beyond Call of Duty and invest his time mastering other games. Therefore, any free time Chismo had off of Call of Duty, he tried to rebuild the friendship him and Diamond once had a year ago. After several weeks of playing alongside Diamond in these other games, Chismo told a few MVP veterans about him uh, reconnecting, about him reconnecting with Diamond. At first, some lieutenants were uneased about trusting Diamond as a friend again because of all the trouble he gave MVP a year ago. Once March started, Diamond started to feel like family again because of his relaxed state of mind since Diamond wasn't in MVP he didn't have to carry a burden of maintaining his skills as one of the be MVP's best players the type of mindset Diamond developed from Chismo in his member days in MVP were being fearless arrogant confident and intimidating these traits symbolized everything Chismo is in Call of Duty so since Chismo needed a third captain he made sure to give Diamond the traits he developed in MVP to become second captain. In other words the third cap tournament was also designed for Chismo to see which personality trait was dominant enough to shape the future of MVP. Royal Diamond was ambition. Royal to loyal pride. Suicidal determination. Young Prince value. Um, Super Pig, Curiosity, Defend My Honor, Underdog in the finals had pride 
an underdog. Pride won, which Diamond couldn't accept, and I'll explain why. What Chismo taught Diamond allowed him to develop faster than everybody else, which made him too overconfident and didn't fully prepare to face Pride in the first round. Pride, on the other hand, understood what he was up against skill-wise and prepared for all the worst-case scenarios. Therefore, for old time's sake, Chismo told Diamond about Tipsy's training while playing Rocket League on PS4. The second day, uh, the next day, Cheeseman wanted Tipsy to meet Diamond in the first annual MVP vs. MVS event on March 25th, 2018. MVS team had the second captain, Ex Savage Boy, third captain, Cheeseman, Tipsy, Zero Elite, Thrill Us Alive, and Phase Baby. MVP's team had Royal Diamond, Pam, Vape, Awesome Robber, Karn, and the Boss Man. The first match was SND. Four rounds where MVS had to use snipers while MVP were allowed to play with any guns. MVS had a great callouts uh, when working as a team while MVP sticked by a pattern, um, planting the bomb. At the beginning, it was back and forth between rounds in Black Ops 3 on the map hunted. Royal Diamond carried his team without being cocky. Instead, he was giving his team motivation and tactics throughout the match. Chizu was so happy that Diamond played in this event because thanks to him, Pam and Vape, Pam and Vape, they won the first match. During the event, MVS won in sniping, MVP won in any guns, so we decided to have a final match to determine the winner in any guns. Fortunately, MVS lost overall in any guns, but won overall in sniping, making the first annual MVS vs. MVP event a draw. Therefore, Cheeseman decided that we end off the event in a free-for-all melee match on Nuketown and nobody won due to the game freezing. A few days later, Tipsy joined Cheeseman Custom Game to officially meet Royal Diamond. Once he joined, Cheeseman said, Tipsy, this is Royal Diamond. He was previously known as the third lieutenant of MVP's fourth generation, which is still the strongest gen in MVP history. Tipsy said, it's good to finally meet you, Diamond. I remember facing you in the MVS vs. MVP event, and it seems you're not just all talk. Diamond said, yeah, the event was fun, but cheese, why aren't we going online now? Chizo said, Diamond, I want you to train Tipsy in any guns. I know you're not an MVP, but I really would appreciate it. Nobody in MVP has that drive you had in your time. Plus, I expect Tipsy to be greater than the both of us one day. Diamond groaned silent because he did not accept this turn of events, especially when he just wanted to play online for a while and get offline. Chismo said, what's in the past is in the past. You're not an MVP anymore, but I believe training someone like Tipsy would bring out a special quality in you I always knew you had back in MVP. Diamond said, Troy, I don't know. I don't play this game. Chizo finished off saying, how about you 1v1 him and let actions speak for themselves in the beginning of the match. <laughs> Tipsy was nervous to face Diamond after witnessing his abilities in the MVS versus MVP event. Diamond played by a solid pace, spawn trapping Tipsy consistently at Orange House. After four minutes of getting killed, Tipsy decided to let Diamond push him Blue House. Tipsy did second gen strat similar to how Rambo the Great played under pressure against Royal to Loyal. Diamond kept boost jumping, giving away his position. This allowed Tipsy to get several kills on Diamond using strategy to his advantage. Cheese will notice that Diamond was enjoying facing Tipsy. In the middle of the match, Tipsy Oof, sorry guys. Tipsy kept picking up Diamond's gun since a majority of his classes weren't giving him an advantage. In a close-up gunfight, Diamond started showing signs of MVP captain instead of an ambitious lieutenant with a goal to become stronger. Cheeseboro almost cried witnessing one of the greatest students, one of his greatest students, one v wanting somebody for the first time without the intention of victory, but the curiosity of this member's development. Therefore, Royal Diamond eventually got Tipsy to spawn back at Orange House, spawn trapping him once again, winning 30-19. to 19. After the match, Tipsy said, Diamond, you played so good, 
even better than Cheesemo. Cheesemo screamed, What was that? Then both Diamond and Tipsy started laughing. They both sent each other a frown quest, and Diamond decided to train Tipsy. In the months between April and May, Diamond got to meet several 6th Gen Lieutenants like Kangalang, It's Coven, Boy Bear, Awesome Robber, and Karn. Throughout Diamond's encounters with these guys, he remained normal since he wasn't an MVP anymore. Chizmo started to witness Captain personalities from Diamond towards MVP. Furthermore, these lieutenants on certain occasions told Diamond to change his clan tag to MVP. Chizmo always reminded them that Diamond is not an MVP, but that doesn't mean he's not family. Diamond always appreciated the new generation's respect for him despite what he did a year ago. Tipsy always talked with Diamond every day. In between the months of June and July, Diamond was able to bring out the other 50% of Tipsy's cockiness as a Call of Duty player. Diamond was proud of his students' new abilities and Chismo felt like Tipsy could accomplish something Diamond couldn't, which is becoming an MVP captain. Throughout these months, Tipsy started to improve his KD score per minute in BO3. Also, every game he played at 100%, carrying MVP in every game mode. The difference Cheesemo noticed between Diamond's MVP era and Tipsy's current MVP development is, in Diamond's member days, he was surrounded by 4th gen members that strive to be the best player in MVP history. Small things like playing online for fun was extremely competitive in 4th gen. Furthermore, as a generation, they wanted to surpass Cheesemo, Cheesemo's first generation as the new strongest gen in MVP. Lastly, beyond those ambitions, the, the greatest privilege in MVP was surpassing Chizwa as the third captain of MVP. Tipsy's member days was surrounded by 7th gen members that were fascinated about MVP history. Every day they were compared to the great players from the past. Small things like playing online were competitive and a way to improve themselves and enjoyable playing with the family. Therefore, beyond those inspirations, 70% of 7th Gen members strive to become lieutenants. 30% of 7th Gen dreamed of becoming a future captain. In early July, Diamond put MVP back on his clan tag, rejoining the family just because it felt right. Tipsy and Chismo were happy on his decision. On August 7th, 2018, Diamond changed his name to Paws Royal Diamond, pretending to be a random kid joining MVP. Tipsy tried his best to convince Chizmo that this kid wanted a warm up against him first, saving all his energy for Chizmo. Throughout the match, Diamond played like a noob so that Chizmo wouldn't realize he was actually playing. Near the end of the match of Tipsy vs. Paws Royal Diamond, Chizmo noticed a sudden change in the last two minutes of the game, where Diamond's accuracy timing changed to a split second. Then, Chizmo said, Diamond, if I beat you with broken with a broken controller, you best restart your stats on your actual Royal Diamond account. Tipsy stated, it's not Diamond, Chizmo. This is my friend from... Um, this is my friend from school. In the beginning of the match, Chizmo took his time to check his surroundings at Orange House before pushing out in the middle. Diamond eventually pushed out, killing Chizmo several times, but Chizmo didn't pay attention to his deaths. He was mostly paying attention to Diamond's strategy. Once Chizmo knew where Diamond was going to push throughout the game, Chizmo killed Diamond by spawn trapping, getting a 10 kill lead. After Chizmo... After that, Chizmo just had to be in the right spots at the right time to continue to dominate Diamond while lagging several times. Therefore, Chizmo beat Diamond 30-20, to 20, proving once again that he's the best of the best. Chizmo tried to get offline, but Diamond demand a rematch. Chizmo could have got offline, but he knew Diamond's impatience would get the best of him because of Diamond. Because Diamond said... Chizmo, you really gonna run away right now? I thought you were the best of the best. Then Chizmo said, I am the best of the best. Maybe I should remind you again with another win. In the beginning of the match, Diamond played with incredible bureaucracy against Chizmo's guns and tactics. Chizmo didn't want to lose, so he played 
with the same strategy of the last game. Throughout the match, Chismo was trying to catch up, but Diamond's air boost had Chismo beat. Furthermore, Chismo is aware that if Diamond has a 5 kill lead or higher, it's impossible to win unless there's no time limit. Therefore, Diamond beat Chismo 30 to 20, and Chismo couldn't expect anything less. So Chismo said, "Good game," and got offline. On August, on August 8, 2018, Royal Diamond challenged Royal Toil's new student, Critical, from MVP Seventh Generation on Black Ops 3. Chismo was interested to see who would win. Throughout the first match, was incredible. Incredibly competitive between the two diamond was playing calm and maintain his five kill lead during the match Diamond was talking to Chismo about random stuff while maintaining his intensity throughout the middle of the game Critical strategy was spawn on but diamond was three steps ahead of him which got critical spawn trap losing 30 to 19 in their second match critical played really aggressive from the beginning but diamond quickly tied it tied it up by one simple spawn trap at Orange House. Throughout the middle of the match, they kept killing each other back and forth. Diamond continued to play normal without cockiness. Therefore, despite Critical playing at 100%, he lost again 30 to 27, which impressed Chizmo to the point where he wanted to 2v1 both of them. They both laughed for a second until Diamond told everyone he's getting offline. Chizmo expected Diamond to leave, especially after a week later. What? Uh, of com. What? Uh, especially a week later after a competitive match. Therefore, Royal, to Royal Diamond ended up leaving MVP for a third time, but not because he had beef with anyone or couldn't win a captain tournament. Diamond left to focus on his high school exams and because he didn't like Black Ops 3. Chismo also thinks Diamond left MVP because he didn't want to be 5th captain. Diamond was passionate about becoming 3rd captain because he wanted to surpass Chismo. So becoming 5th to him felt like an easy way to be captain. Overall, Royal Diamond is a legendary MVP member that always strived for greatness. He never went easy on his teachers, students, or rivals. As a person, he's a funny teenager that enjoys pissing off Chismo for a quick laugh. Besides that, he always looks out for his friends. Therefore, Royal, Tana Royal, ah! Therefore, Royal Diamond will be remembered for his intensity, ambitions, uh, ambitious behaviors, and teamwork capabilities in MVP. The end. So... This is the chapter of Royal Diamond. He was a legendary MVP member. He went through three different phases in MVP. But overall, in the end, he showed... Um, he showed... He became... He became a member and kind of a future leader that Chismo always knew he was, despite everybody thinking differently. And that's what I respect about Diamond the most, is that even at his lowest point, even if he retires, despite him coming back briefly, he's always remains one of the, the most legendary and greatest MVP lieutenants I have ever trained or been with. Because I may have taught Diamond my negative traits, but it was those negative traits that also shaped me to who I am today. As a COD player, as a leader in MVP and everything. So that's it for this clip. And I thank you guys for tuning in. Peace.